everyone! Welcome back to some more Let's Play Ogre Battle 64! Let's do a quick summary of the last part before we get to the army organization screen. I'm gonna try to make these... these summaries about like a minute or less if I can. Because I've... I realize I've been talking... and already I'm doing this. I babble a little too much about the summary of what occurred in the last video. And I like to keep it under two minutes, if possible. So let's go ahead and see how good I can do. So I'm just going to wing it. In the last episode, we did area investigations of Gunther Piedmont and the Volbus Mine. Several times, actually. For about 20 days, in order to earn experience points by hunting down griffins and blue dragons and young dragons. We learned that blue dragons drop a decent weapon, if you can kill them, a psionic claw. Which is a water-based claw weapon. And we gave the only one we managed to get... To Grumbly. It's not a common drop at all, but it was worth making the attempt to find out what they did and gain it into our army. We helped a blacksmith in Gunther Piedmont get back together with his wife in Balmus Mine, or perhaps the other way around is more appropriate, since she left him, given the issues he was having. They got back together, he cleaned up his act, and we were able to purchase a Dragoon helmet. We can purchase other ones in the future from this location as well. They're 260 goth for each helmet, and they're basically the same as an armet, only they also add a little bit of fire resistance. Most importantly, we need at least one of them if we are intending to create a Dragoon class for our army. We were then tasked to go to Dardanels as part of the Revolutionary Army to cut off the reinforcements from here to reaching Alba. If that occurred, then the attack that Destin and the forces of the Revolutionary Army were planning here would fail miserably. While doing that exact task, we discovered that the forces in the Southern Division were using creatures from the Netherworld, ogres and goblins. These are not things which are normally present in this world, at least that's the impression I, get, I got from the discussion at the very end of the, of the last video there. And apparently the ogre battle was a battle a long time ago for the population of the planet we're on, where humans squared off against ogres, and the gods helped the humans while the demons helped the ogres. And we learned that, uh, well, humans were put to the, were put hard to it until the gods sent down some major assistance and cut off the demons from assisting the ogres, and then the ogres were slaughtered by the uh, combined forces that were still left. Good job, humans. And now, that's it for the for the summary. Okay, with the summary done, let's head on over now to the army organization. Remember, this will, be, this will be the last time I say this, everyone. If you don't want to watch any particular part of an Ogre Battle 64 video of mine, that these are segmented. I have, ti have timestamped them. You can either click on the timestamp in the video description, or you can up the, on the video itself, they're segmented. So you can go ahead and adjust the slider to the part you want to watch, in case you don't care about the area investigation, you don't care about the army organization stuff I do, you don't want to watch the training, but you do want to watch the actual scenes which transpire. Alright, so, this is going to be an interesting army organization because we've gained quite a bit of experience in the last episode, and we also don't have any soldiers. In fact, I don't think there's anything I really need to do here at this moment. Yep, we have no soldiers currently in our army. We're using all non-soldier units, and we don't have any fighters or Amazons any longer either. Everything is now a tier two? A tier 2 unit. Yeah. We're going to have to change that for the next scene, if I recall correctly, and begin adding soldiers back into my army again. But this would mean I'm, I'm probably going to want to create one or two new formations. Okay, so then, if I don't need to do any of that, no soldier replacement, then I'm going to go ahead and give back power fruits. Oh, yeah! That was something we discovered in the last episode as well. The item glitch bug in the game. So, I've had a correction from Vin, 
who, uh, I, I thought that the Love and Peace item was an item that you carried in your army's inventory, and they had to have it on them to use it. Apparently that's not the case. It's just, it's something that's held in, you, you can use it whenever you like, as long as, it, as long as you have it in your, uh, as long as you have one. And I thought people used it to do, uh, use the item duplication bug to glitch Love and Pieces in their army. Maybe you can do that via a different way. But I, I don't remember ever reading about such. But in any case, item duplication glitch uh, involves man manipulating your armies by adding and removing people into uh, units into them in order to get an item to appear and disappear, and yet the count somehow uh, uh, then it increases the, the count of that item. It's very tricky. You have to place the item you want to duplicate in a very specific spot in your army and so on to, to do it. It was a complete accident when I ended up doing it uh, in the last video. Uh, but we ended up not keeping what we duplicated. We duplicated two altars of resurrection by accident. Holy crap, what an item to actually duplicate. <laughs> but it was a little too cheaty. I don't want to cheat in this game. So we decided not to keep it. Alright, so our items are now replenished. Hmm. Let's see. We got a sword at the end of the last episode, a Sum Magnus, which is a air weapon, if I recall correctly. So, I guess this gives me a chance to show this, perhaps. Oh, maybe, okay. So to my recollection, items such as the Sum Magnus, sort of lightning made from the skill of a thunder dragon, Things of this sort, I've always thought that they were best used by someone who has an affinity to the element that it consists of. Magnus, our Magnus here, has a affinity to air or lightning. As you can see up, let's see, can I, I, I can show you. I just have to do this really awkwardly. Here. Air protects this character, and so I've always thought that that means that he, an item that is uh, has the air affinity associated with it does better on this character. And so when I used to play this game in the past, I've always given Magnus the some Manus item, weapon, when I would get that from that particular encounter, and I'm going to do that again here. So now, we, now, now that we've given him that weapon, we have an extra blessed sword we can give somebody. Let's see. And I'm thinking we're gonna give this to Dismiss. His damage goes up. He slashes from. Oh, that's interesting. He doesn't heal from the final position. So he slashes down from each position. And I was talking about it briefly in the last episode, but his army is a bit weaker compared to all the others given that Donovan, the griffin back here, does as much damage as, say, Charlotte does, or Belduke does back there, but is a two-unit uh, size creature. And so this, this army needs some more damage to make up for that. So we'll go ahead and give him the Blessed Sword to start that. We may want to change Droit to a new class as well. What can you become, Droit? Ooh. All right, this gives me a chance to talk about alignment a little more. So something new is happening here, everyone. The first time we're seeing this. Note that he can't become a Beastmaster because his alignment is too good. We are going to have to uh, get him in an evil army if we want him to be a Beastmaster. The same for the Berserker, for example. Okay, I was hoping he wasn't that good and we could make him into a mage, but we cannot do that. Alright, well then, we leave you as a ninja droid. How about our Beastmaster? He can just barely become a mage, if I want him to be one, and I think we should probably do that. 
This means buying equipment for him. Uh, let's just do it. Oh, but Tim, if he's a Beastmaster, you're Griffin. My Griffin will suffer a little bit of damage reduction. Oh, uh, he will. Maybe we don't do this. We'll leave you alone, Reynold, for a little longer. Okay, we'll just have to consider shifting armies around when I go ahead and add soldiers to this force because we're going to want soldiers and new form new formations for the next scene, if I remember the next scene correctly. Okay, so uh, I think that's all the like good equipment we had to assign people. Yes. Okay, so no one needs any new gear. We didn't pick up anything else that was special. We have no one that needs leveling up. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have no classes. Uh, no other... Mm, well, we might. Hold on. Tracy. Tracy is becoming quite evil in this group. She can barely be an archer at this moment. So I think we'll sh change her into a Sork. Let's do it. And do we have anyone else that we could shape, uh, shape change that we could shift? Kind of need to have like a two archers in this army, but then we lack a healer. Petra, maybe we do that anyway. Oh, we're gonna want dragon tamers soon in our army as well. I'm gonna do this. Let's make Petra an archer. We need healers, or I wanted healers in the last episode in particular, given the ogres that we were fighting there. I knew we we're gonna take substantial amounts of damage from those things, and I think the only reason why we didn't lose more people is because of the armies I used against them. Shannon, you're, we're gonna need to drop your alignment. How is your alignment, as long as we're here doing a little bit of this stuff? Leaning evil. Leaning evil. You'll be fine there at the moment. Okay, so I think we're done now with our classes and with army organization as well. Yeah, we're done. Okay, so let's now go ahead and see this part off. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and get some area investigation of Dardanels. You'll note that I am not doing the training next. I think from now on, we'll do the training after the area investigations, because if we have any encounters here, we are more likely to defeat the enemy creatures if we are not leveled up a tiny bit more and do a tiny bit more damage, because we don't, we're going to as you've seen in the last episode, or maybe you didn't, we are killing creatures now a lot more often than, or rather, we're weakening creatures, getting to the point where they run. And that makes killing them a lot more difficult. <laughs> so we're going to hold off leveling via training until after this is done. We also make it lucky and have quite a few random encounters and not need to do as much training as we would otherwise be, uh, be required to. Okay, now you might have noticed as well from this previous screen that it was day 14, Deus the 14th. I think it is still the 14th at this moment. So we have one day to reach Dardunnels. 
here. If we want to purchase the silk that is located there, we also have to get there within a certain time frame of the first day. I think we've got to be there at like a normal working hours from like 9 to 5 or something like that. And so we'll send a unit there immediately to try to, uh, for that purpose. So, Dio, let's have you head over here. Magnus, we'll send you here. We also, by the way, we need Bruno. Gina needs to be resurrected. And that's quite a distance to walk. So let's have you go here, towards the witch's den. Fordham. Let's see what's going to be here as well, right? We don't know what creatures are here. The townspeople have informed us that young and mature dragons inhabit the area. Undead have also been seen in the area. Be careful. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what type of dragons are located here. If there's undead, those will be in the forests. But they could have dragons in the area, too. I think Fordham will spend some time in the barrens here. Actually, right, we need also we also need to fully explore this location. We have not done so. So let's have Fordham do something like this to start. My Bumba. We didn't visit this city at all in the last episode. We avoided capturing it. Let's send you down there. Bell Duke. I, I'm a little nervous having you go into the forests for fear of you fighting undead and getting alignment up, but I'll risk it a bit. Let's send you to the stronghold first. You got these people go out for a bit, get some distance. Okay, next. Uh, Penelope. Let's see. We'll have you go into the mountains a bit and just see if there's anything up on the mountain peaks. Ultra. I guess we'll visit that location. And here. Let's start with you. We got some altars of resurrection the last time we were here. So it would be nice to uh, thoroughly search this place and maybe find another one, if there is another one out here. Bumba, you head down there. Oh, sorry, Dismas, you head down there. All right, we're off. Check it out. Rosary. Someone just threw the rosary <laughs> at the edge of that lake. <laughs> That's a bit disturbing. I can do what it's if you're rosary, you can do whatever you want with it, I suppose. Alright, Magnus. Let's go ahead and head on in. Let's see what the city says. When my grandfather was on his deathbed, he told me that all people are equal. Everyone dies, whether from disease, age, war, whatever. I remember this this guy. I think he says he doesn't agree with that. Money or status won't save anyone from the Grim Reaper. He said that that people realize this when facing death. What do you think? I don't agree with it. <laughs> I think he's actually correct. Everyone is everyone. Everyone sees is going to view death. Why well, is that true? Maybe it's not true in this world because there's gods in this world, right? But I don't know how the divinity works in this world. There seems to be one religion. Well, I think everyone is is still equal, and yes, you probably realize that the older you get, especially when you're probably on your deathbed, you begin to realize that everything, everyone's going to eventually die. What a horrible thing to talk about. Let's change the topic. So first, let's go. Let's have Magus go up on the mountains, just in case there's something up there. I don't think there will be. And what can we talk about, viewer? Oh, actually, thankfully, we don't talk about anything because Bell Duke just reached the city. So let's go into the city first.
When this is all done, can you recount your tales for me? I always wanted to be a writer, but I gave up because I couldn't feed myself. Yeah, man. It's tough. It's tough being a writer, an artist. You gotta, you gotta somehow make ends meet. Relying upon the people liking your stuff, and there's quite a few people who probably have a wide opinion of what they do or don't like in the forms of different art. If you succeed and share your story with me, I may be able to do it. Oh, okay, sounds like this guy also needs some motivation in order to be able to write. Which is also true for writers. You gotta, you gotta do it when the... That's what I'm looking for. Inspiration. When the inspiration hits you is when you gotta do it. Forcing yourself to write is... Oh, it's awful. Trying to sit down and come up with ideas when you're not in the mood to sit and think about them is... Oh, it's terrible. I hate that. Bumba, what's in this? Monsters slaughtered the reinforcements from Latinum. The corpses were horrifically mangled. Oh! I'm gonna assume it wasn't every single group, though. But that's interesting. So, use as reinforcements those ogres and goblins were difficult to control. Sounds like they rebelled in a few places and killed their leaders. That's what we saw the very, with the very first cutscene when the Knight of the Revolutionary Army and the Southern Division f soldier helped each other fight the ogres. They probably both died though in that in that city. What a great cutscene was that? I still remember that that to this day. Bumba, it is time for you to head out here really quick and see if there's anything secreted. Then into the woods with you. Bell Duke, let's let you recover your stamina I just had. Penelope, there was nothing, I guess, on the mountaintop. We can just rest you up there. Bruno, rest you on the way to the city. Bell Duke. So. I'll risk undead with you, and you'll head into the forest, doing a little bit of this. Dismiss. Let's investigate that forest. Fordham! Let's see. I guess it's gonna be barrens for you. Let's search that plains, and then we'll hang out here and see what's inside the barrens today. Ultra, I can rest you a bit. Right, so writing when inspiration is not with you, when you don't really want to, I I discover that I write, it's less enthusiastic, I don't have the same enthusiasm I normally do, and you can tell in what I write. I do a lot of writing for Dozen of Dragons because I'm running my own campaign, and it can take it. Well, first off, I love it. It takes hours for me to come up with stories and write the dialogue between characters or descriptions of things and so on. I love having a ton of stuff written down in advance. I don't like winging things very often, but forcing myself to do that can be very difficult. Uh, and you can tell when I'm when I wasn't in the mood to write versus when I was in the mood to do so. And hold on, what time is it? Okay, Dio, let's see what's in Dardanels. So this will answer the question if this is now the 15th or 16th as well. It's the 16th. Every night I have nightmares about those monsters. They would tear me limb from limb, slowly killing me. There was nothing we could do to stop them. We'll go back into this city a little bit later in this day. We'll try going back around the, uh, 4 o'clock, but I'm pretty sure we missed... We missed uh, the the shop, uh, the merchant there. We know there's nothing on that mountain. So, Ultra, let's just have you, I guess, go here. One more time, Dio. Yep, okay. Alright, so this is good to know. So, remember when I said earlier that it was the 14th when we came in here? That wasn't true. It must have been the 15th instead. 
I was a little worried about that. So, an entire day elapses when you enter a location, is my guess as to what happened there. Hey, some cloth armor. Oh, hold on. Theo, you're tired, aren't you? You are. Hold on. Let's not move you, then. More cloth armor. I guess the game really wants me to be using more fencers, but I don't see why I would do that. All right, Magnus, you can just rest there as well. All right, so what, what can we talk about, viewer? We've got six days or so during this area investigation, and hopefully we can kill a few things while we're out here. Bumble, let's rest you too. So, well, I guess we can talk about random crap. <laughs> we're walking around. So, I've got plenty of game icons on my computer here. And I think in the last episode, I talked a very... Oh my god, we can go all the way out here and we should do exactly that. So, let's have you do that. Dismiss. I talked about some of the games that came out in the year 1999 that I have played at some point in my life. Many of those games I didn't play in 1999. Uh, it would be many years later that I would actually play them, but I did play them. And so I'm looking at the at my desktop, and I'm seeing quite a bit here, all these game icons. And so I think I'll talk a little bit about each individual game, if I've played it or not, because I have quite a few icons on my computer to encourage me to play it, but I don't. I haven't done so. I have, I have way too many video games, everyone. <laughs> way. Way too many video games have I purchased in my life. My Steam backlog has like easily a hundred games, 105 games I've never even played. And so I'm trying to get myself to play these games on the off chance that I... Tur it turns out I really like them and I didn't realize I had such a great game before. That's, that's been the case multiple times. But first... Which is dead. Do you need my skills? Yes. Who needs to be revived? Oh! Gina does count as two units, which is probably why we're looking at 470 and not 235 goth for this resurrection. So, you want Gina to be brought back to life, huh? That'll cost you 470 goth. Yes. All right, then. Let's begin. Hope, the god of wisdom, grant me the secret of returning the deceased back to life. There. I'm done. Looks like everyone is alive and well. Take care of yourself. Now we sit here, just we don't want to enter that that city because if there's a battle in that city, Gina's got one hit point, and then it's 470 Goth the Resurrector again. <laughs> I don't feel like doing that. So we'll just have you rest there a bit. Yeah, so I have all of these game icons on my computer, and to encourage me to play these games or give them a try. And many of these games I've played uh, before, and some of them are here because I intend to record them. Others are here just as something I can play in between recording sessions and not upload it to my channel. But many of them are here because I am trying to record them. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these games together. Why not, right? Well, what else are we going to do, viewer? <laughs> uh, Fordham, we didn't find anything so far in the Barrens. So let's have you walk back and forth through it. Do this. Okay. All right, so... Holy crap! Oh! There are Thunder Dragons here. We'll see if we can kill it. But Thunder Dragons are a dragon type I don't. I would not mind having in my army. Let's see if we can kill it. Which is not likely with our army. I'll make the call based upon how much damage we do to it here. Well, we might be able to. 
We're all gonna have to hit it again, though. And it might have one hit point left. Gonna be very close. Very close. One hit point left. One twenty six is too much life. Okay. A bastard sword. All right, that's not so bad. We we can make another fencer with the cloth armor and bastard sword if you so wish. Ultra, let's have you rest here a bit. We probably should convert other ninjas who isn't Grumbly to fencers. I think they level well. They level a bit differently. Their stat line. Uh, I'll make the call when we get back out, out of this area. All right. So, first game I see uh, here is The Witcher 3. Holy crap! Remember when I was recording The Witcher 3? <laughs> I have something like 87 or so uh, hours of The of the Witcher 3 uh, uploaded in a playlist on my channel. Look at all the stuff we're finding. Heal Seeds, uh, Gingasa, uh, uh, God, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, Hat, Floppy Hat. We're getting a bunch of other crap. This is amazing. Let's move here, Bell Duke. Right, so it's here because I feel, I, part of me feels like I should really finish that Let's Play, and uh, man, I know I'm not. That's that's sad, but I I know I'm not. It's it's a great game. I really liked the the voice acting, the story. I like the combat. Uh, I like the mods I had installed to make things a little less uh, busy work. I love the exploration. I liked a whole lot about it, and man, it's that icon just sits there saying, "Tim, you used to play this game, and you're never gonna finish it, are you?" And I know I'm not gonna. I should probably just uninstall it at this point, because I, there's all sorts of other games I want to play and finish, and I there's so much of The Witcher 3 still left. I feel a bit overwhelmed by the amount of things I still have to do. Which is, for the most part, why I'm not playing it again, uh, at the moment. That was fun, though. That used to be the series where I did a lot of this, talking about random stuff as I ran back and forth between places. So, it, you guys probably know, but like, I don't like fast travel. Generally, I don't take it. I like walking places, or in, th in that case, uh, traveling on roach to get to, to place to place. And so, well, that would... Oh, a ghost. Oh, Dio. You got you got to kill this in one go before it runs. Uh, we could do the damage. All of us have to hit it, though. That's a great start. Nope, it runs. Wow. Okay, well, we're not killing ghosts either, then. Not enough speed. Or whatever the speed stat is on some of my characters to make sure we all go before it goes. Okay, uh, let's send you up through the crack. Bumba. So, okay, so there are undead. They're going to be in the forest. We'll keep you in the forest, Bumba, on the off chance you find a skeleton and can kill it. Um, yeah, so The Witcher, Witcher 3. Great game. Really liked it. Uh, glad I waited many years to play it. I did not grab that game when it was first released, despite all the raving about it, because I generally, when it comes to games, I want to wait to play them and not buy them at launch, because it's my belief that most games these days uh, are bug-written messes when they're first released. Uh, especially, especially the more, like, hype a game has, I could swear that it seems like they're more buggy. <laughs> when, they, when they get released. The, the bigger the like AAA game studio, the more problems the game seems to have. That's been my experience with them. So, very glad I didn't play The Witcher 3 when it first came out. It was a glorious time. Stop. Fordham, I need you to stay inside the Barrens. You want to kill Thunder Dragons. Dismiss. It's a long hike over here, but we're going to do it. Oh wow, we can walk up on the mountain too, huh? Let's let's do this. And hold on, Bell Duke just reached the city. 
Those are what's in the city. Did you see those monsters? They were not of this world. I thought I was going crazy. Nah, that must be nuts. They didn't really exist. Wow. No, you saw them, all right. The dead people are a testament to the fact that they were here. Unless maybe she thinks they were, like, illusionary. We'll let you rest there a little bit. Magnus! You want to kill dragons. Thunder dragons. So that means you got to come here. For us to do that. All right, another game I see a uh, icon on my computer for is Hellpoint. Uh, Hellpoint is a. It, I, in this instance, it I'm actually saying the correct words to describe this, as uh, as opposed to many other games descriptors which use this terminology and it is, are, is not accurate. But it is a Souls-like. Uh, the gameplay is a lot like the first Dark Souls, uh, only it takes place in the future, not a fantasy setting on a space station which is orbiting a black hole where uh, they if let's just say it's very similar to doom 2016 in some regards because they were using like hell energy or something like that like rituals were ongoing to create or summon creatures on the space station i guess i have to also quickly say about these games if i like it or not i can recommend it Hellpoint is interesting because I like some aspects of it, but I'm not quite sure I can recommend it. Uh, it's, it reuses bosses, for example, as standard creatures at some point. The story is... I, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> uh, and many of the items, they don't feel like they're that great in the game. But I still like it. It's a game that I can turn off my brain for. As I'm playing it, or I can listen to something else, like a podcast, or listen to a streamer uh, stream their game and talk about random crap while I play it. And so it's up here in particular because it just got some new DLC, which is bug-written. <laughs> so I'm waiting, waiting to fix some of those bugs before I pick it up. But uh, I want to play through it again and see what the new DLC adds, but I'm waiting until they fix the bugs before I go and purchase that DLC. I thought about recording it for Halloween because it is, it's not a scary game, but the, it's very atmospheric. But I'm not sure if I will do that or not yet. Gotta be really picky with the games I record for my channel. East of here are rolling hills with fertile soil. Those are the Giles Hills, the boundary of Capitrium and Latin. Until you arrived, peasants weren't allowed to go east. Hmm. Only merchants or soldiers or wealthier classes. Still not sure if there's slave here or not. It sounds like they use the term peasants and slave interchangeably to mean a really harsh life without a whole lot of pay for the for the work that they do. Okay, uh, Penelope, you're a little tired, but I'll send you out. I guess we'll have you go to this forest and kill some undead, perhaps. This mister, there was nothing out here, I see. Okay, well, I'm glad to know that. Bruno. Bruno, you are probably the one person who can actually kill dragons and or ghosts. Ah, uh, ghosts you might not supposed to kill. You have to have a crit with Gina to kill them. Oh, crap. Bruno, how is Gina doing, by the way? I might have moved you out of that city too quickly. We did. Okay. Let's move you to this city. I'm not worried about losing Gina to a random encounter. They would have to crit twice. And I, that's not lucky to happen, but it could. Uh, Bumba, we can rest you here. Yeah, so... Uh, so, Alright, another game I have up here is a Spirit Engine 2. Uh, the Spirit Engine 2 is a game that I always have installed on my computer. Uh, when I, every computer I cr I've created since this game came out, I think it was like 2008 or so, I've made sure this game is on it, because it's my second favorite game ever made. I don't play it very often, 
but I really loved ha uh, the combat in the game and the story of the game. It's quite unique. I've not played another game that is that is like it. Uh, the closest thing to it would have come out a few years later, and that would have been Darkest Dungeon. But the gameplay there is quite different than the Spirit Engine 2. Spirit Engine 2, the positioning matters a lot more, and it's real-time combat, not turn-based. It's great. I absolutely love the Spirit Engine 2. I can highly recommend the Spirit Engine 2. Spirit Engine 2 is absolutely free. Absolutely free as well. Uh, I love the story. I love the, the, the writing. I like the combat. It's got a anime cartoony type of uh, look to it. The music was great. There was... I can't think of anything about it I disliked. Uh, and... And, like this game, you could set up what the game called Skill Chains to have your units, your formation, fight automatically in a battle without your, inter without your interfering. That's a, I think it's another big reason why I really liked it so much. It was another... It was very... Uh, well, it could be similar to Ogre Battle 64. But you didn't have to play the game that way. You could totally uh, tell your characters what you wanted them to do each and every round if you, if you so desired. Uh, you know what? Hold on. We should probably keep it going back and forth like this. Mumba. Dio, you're so tired. Yep, so that's here. I meant to actually record the game again for my channel. I, I think I have... I had at least 1.2 playlists of it up here. I might only have one now. Uh, the only issue with the game, and it's not really an issue, is that the first three characters I played through the game with, Denver, Charlotte, and Marikius. Man, I I love the story of them so much that I I can't bring myself to play through the game with anyone else. I really like the writing of those characters together, the way they interact with each other and everything. It's so... Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I, know, I know I'd play through the game again with the same three characters for like the 18th time. <laughs> Let's get you down to the other Barons, Magnus. Uh, Dio, you're still a little tired. Alright, another game I see up here on my channel is Nexus, the Jupiter Incident. Many years ago, I played this puzzly real-time strategy game. Uh, it would... it's a... You're, you operate like a fleet of ships, but much... It'd be like... it's a little bit like Homeworld. Uh, but not quite the same, because you... Uh, to my recollection, you never create a ship. Uh, you don't have, like, structures to do that sort of thing. In Homeworld, the mothership produced things. That's not the way this one works. You have a certain... I think you have a certain fleet. You might occasionally grab other ships as part of the storyline, but they don't stick. They might not stick with you from mission to mission either. But I wanted to play the game again because I did such a poor job playing through it the first time, and I saw it on Steam for sale for like a dollar. The over, I think it was like a spring break or something, or during the. It might have been during the last winter sa uh, Christmas sale. And so I, I grabbed it. It's sitting here because I want to play it. And I, man, I, I just haven't gotten around to it because I'm, I'm playing all sorts of other addicting games instead. <laughs> Sacrifice is another game I have up here. It's another real-time strategy game. I guess we're going to talk about games that involve... Oh, on my, on, the, on my desktop, I have all the games organized. Their icons are on rows based upon the type of gameplay that they consist of. So these are going to be real-time combat-oriented games at the moment. Sacrifices up here, which was, in my opinion, one of the best real-time strategies, if not the best real-time strategy game I have ever played. Uh, I liked the campaign. I liked the secret missions in it. I liked the voice acting in it. I thought the setting was pretty surreal, and it was the first real-time strategy game where it was hero-centered. The camera, for that matter, for that, uh, for that purpose, was centered over your... You're a wizard, I think, at all times, if I remember exactly. No, 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 you could shift the camera. There were options for that. But you felt like your hero, your wizard, was right in the thick of it the entire time. And I loved it. I like being able to choose different types of spells for your spell book. Different types of, like, so you would choose a rank, and that rank would give you a certain unit and spell to go with it. And it was great. 
Uh, I do wish that there was different types of buildings to produce units instead of requiring souls to do so. But it still worked very well, uh, and I liked the game. I never beat the game, and Sacrifice won uh, a survey uh, two years ago now, almost, for the real-time strategy game I was going to upload to my channel, and it's there to remind me to do it. And I've actually recorded the tutorial. I have the videos on my computer to prove it, but I'm waiting to record the entire game before I upload them, and I haven't gotten back to it. So, uh... It will eventually, probably, reach my channel. I just have to commit to doing it. One day. <laughs> One day it'll actually be uploaded. I'm, sh I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. You know, so Sacrifice's campaign is one of the most interesting campaigns I've played. Because, unlike other real-time strategies where you pick a faction you see their story, in this game, you were a bit mercenary. You picked a god during a mission. Like, so you got a choice of gods to work for every single time you went back to the quest hub. And you did that mission. And there were a total of, I think, like, 11 or 12 missions. Might, might have only been 10. But you could, get, you could worm your way through the different gods in any order you wanted. But, as whenever you worked for a god and you completed the, that, that successfully, you gained favor with that god, but lost favor with all the other ones. And so eventually, other gods, and the one, and the one you directly oppose, you lose more favor for. And so eventually, uh, you would be very limited in the gods that you could, you could do missions for, because others wouldn't give you missions. And eventually in the campaign, you began destroying all the other gods. And so you would only have like one left over at the very end of the game. But this had a lot of replayability because you could go through, there were I think five total gods. And so if you did all the missions for each individual god, there were five campaigns, about 50 missions total. But you could do them once again in like any order that you wish. And you could come up with, and every time you worked for a god, you got a particular unit you could summon for it, for that level in the campaign, and a spell associated with it, too. And it would- it was great! The amount of different combinations you could come up with. There's something like 67,000 different combinations of spells you could- you could have at the end of the game. Holy flipping crap! And I intended to record the game. I actually had a few videos uploaded a few years ago, and I was going to use the Google YouTube annotations to let people choose which god I worked for. But it very quickly became overwhelming trying to make individual videos for every single god combination. It's, what is it? It's five videos for the first god. Assuming that, oh wow, another thing that could happen in, the, in each individual mission is that you could, some missions allowed you to betray the god you worked for and turncoat on them. And so I wanted to get that as a separate option for the viewer to click on too. Man, that was going to be a whole lot of work. <laughs> In any case, it was... It was it? It's uh, five videos for the first five gods. Then it's 25 videos for every combination thereafter. Then it's another 100, like, 25 videos after that. Then it's something ridiculous, like three... It's 400? 800? Video, different video combinations, depending upon what the viewer chose after that, is too much. I, I realized right away, I'm like, oh, I can't do this. It's it's just too much work. I would have to dedicate my entire life. If I dedic if I uploaded a video a day for any each individual combination possible, I would die before I was done <laughs> uploading every single possible combination in that game. Ooh, and everyone, I gotta use the bathroom. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, back. So the, the gameplay for Sacrifice didn't play like a standard first uh, real-time strategy game either. Uh, it, like you had a lot of... So moving your, your hero, your, your wizard, for example, you, had, you used the WASD keys to run him back and forth or turn him left and right, for example. You didn't click. You could click to say where to go, but uh, that was mostly for the units you controlled and not your hero. It was very interesting. Uh, I think it was made in like 2003 or something like that as well. Really advanced for its time. Once again, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but I really like playing... Discovering games and playing games that have some unique take on a way... A game, 
a game mechanic or introduce new mechanics or new ways to experience a video game uh, or interact with it in some capacity. That's one of the reasons why I liked Ogre Battle so much. Are we really not going to fight anything else? <laughs> By the way, we've been here a lot, or, or many days now, and we haven't fought a whole lot. This is the only... This is really awkward, because this is, like, one of the only barons I can walk back and forth in. I wonder if Thunder Dragons dropped the Lightning Sword we just got on Magnus. Bumba, we're looking for more undead. Wow, we're probably not going to have killed anything now that I look at this, because we've been here for five days already. I don't really want to spend more than seven days here. Six days here now, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, we're not going to probably kill anything. That's a, that's a bit awkward. I can... I can do it off screen, I suppose. I don't want to spend, like, eight hours looking to kill a Thunder Dragon, for, for example, or farming them. I feel a little too guilty I was doing that. Ultra, so let's have you go here. Maybe there are Hawkmen? We'll see if you can kill a Hawkman. I hate when they do this. I want you to walk into the Barrens. Stay in the Barrens, Bruno. Another game I have up here is a game I intend to record again during this Halloween season, although it isn't very... It's scary, but not in the way I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's scary because I'm terrified of losing people who have named up their viewers, and that's the Bobby Corporation. I haven't forgotten about the game. I didn't finish the game. I'm getting very close to the end of my attempt to beat the game, and it's up here to remind me to play it. And so I intend to dust it off, break out the huge chart. Do you guys remember the chart? <laughs> I still have it. Is in my back room with all everyone still pinned based upon where they're going to who they're fighting and when they're going to be fight uh, like who they're working with that day and what equipment they have and so on and so forth. I think I had just fought and killed the Alfs, right? I killed three Alfs, and I have another task to complete for Gabora, if I recall correctly. The well, microphone was great, a bit grindy, but I didn't mind it so much. I. I really like the setting, and I like the story for the game, and I like to see how it plays out. Oh, although I know how it ends, because I've watched quite a bit now of the Library of Ruina. I own the game, the Library of Ruina, and I think I beat the first, like, two or three chapters in it. Uh, but it's a... that game's a little too grindy for me, so I'm... I'm never going to beat that one. Uh, I've heard it was even more grindy compared to what what I was the way when I was playing the game like a year ago. I didn't have to farm pages as much for certain books. We are not killing this. We just don't do the damage. Even if Aloe was in the back rank, she doesn't do 14 points of holy damage to an undead. It's just not going to happen. It's skeletons we're looking for in those woods. You know what, Bumba? I want to... No, we should... I want to hunt down a dragon. I guess the good news about being so close to our starting HQ is we can just pull out the moment we want to. Although, we're about to hit seven days, so we'll just be here at this a little bit longer. So, this episode, everyone, is very similar to, that one, to the one air investigation I did where I didn't keep it. Because not a whole lot happened. It was just me babbling a lot. So, on one hand, we learned what was here. We did learn a little bit about uh, the people here. So, I will, like, we visited all the cities. So, I do intend to keep this. We'll upload this. We'll have this be a part of the video. But if I come back here to hunt down and destroy, like, Thunder Dragons or what have you, uh, and not a whole lot happens, I might just cut that part and not keep it. I would like to kill something, but we're, on, we're at seven days, everyone, so... I, th I think we're wrapping it up. Yeah, let's pull... let's begin pulling people back. I'm about to rescue you, too. One step from Eden. 
is up here. So that was a game I bought this past summer, just just like a month ago. In order to, it, it looked good. I was like, hey, this looks like a fun game. I wonder what this is like. Wow, <laughs> that game, I am no match for that game. It's it's one of the few times, this doesn't, this doesn't happen very often, where I buy a game and I realize that, oh, I'm not good at this. I, I will not be good at this. this. This is demanding me to do things that I'm unable to do. Uh, I'm old, everyone. I'm almost 50. And I do not have the reaction time in a game of, that, of this sort that it wants to do what it wants me to do. Uh, I don't even... I can't think of another game that it's like, either. So I would recommend you just look it, look it up online if you want to see what the gameplay is like. One Step from Eden is what it's called. It's one of the few times that I own a game. I'm not good at it at all. I know that the game is beyond me. I cannot beat it. I cannot beat the game. And I don't regret my time playing it at all. I think it's the, the ideas in it are amazing. And I really enjoy it, even though I'm not good at it. And so, uh, it's one of those ones where I'm probably going to play it maybe another hour or two. And then... Well, it'll probably just be retired at that point, as opposed to me trying to complete it. There's only so many times I can get punched in the face <laughs> before I just don't want to get punched in the face again. And uh, that this is going to be one of those games. Uh, if I had to try to describe the game, how could I describe it? The game is a... The game takes place in real time. It's There's a grid. Your hero has a grid, and you're fighting either a small group of enemies or a single enemy boss on their side of the grid. You get shown where enemies' attacks will occur, and where your attacks will land. You have to cycle through different spells or effects that have different, well, effects, or deal different points of damage, and target at different areas on the enemy's side of the battlefield. And you have to manage that at the same time while trying to dodge enemies' attacks. It's great! Holy crap, I really like the gameplay, but oh god, I am not good at it at all. One more time in, in the Baron's view, Magnus. Like, at all. <laughs> Is that true, though, Tim? I don't think that's true. You got to the final boss before Eden, and you weren't able to defeat her. I think the bosses in that game are also a bit randomized. The game's a roguelike, or sorry, roguelite. Uh, you can't reload the game. Uh, I guess unless you quit and backed up your save, your save, so, so you, you can always save scum it. Any game that allows you to quit and then come back to where you left off, you can save scum that. But uh, I'm not going to do that for, for this game. But it looks like it's a bit, it's very randomized about the types of spells you get, and the enemies you fight seem to be linked to the type of terrain that you go into. I think there's two bosses per terrain type that you can encounter, or something of that sort. You're not guaranteed, so if you know, like, Ice Girl is one you still have to, beat, to defeat, and you wanted to fight her for you want to fight her early because the enemies get stronger the later that you decide to tackle them on, uh, take them on. Then you you want to go like the ice areas first and so on. It's I, once again I highly recommend you look up a video for the game if you're curious about what I'm talking about. One step from Eden, really liked it. Not good at it. Not ever going to be able to beat the game. I'll never see what Eden looks like. <laughs> I'll have to instead just rely on other people uh, doing it for me live vicariously through their uh, successful efforts to beat the game. I was mean, getting too old for that. Bell Duke, yep, we're gonna move you out here too. So, so much for farming. This was a lot of time spent not fighting anything. I'm guessing in this instance there isn't anything on the plains either. Man, this is super awkward. I was really hoping to kill some stuff, but it's just not going to happen. All right, everyone heads, everyone's heading home now. I got plenty of other games to talk about, but we'll talk about them the next time I do an area investigation. I can take out my frustrations by going back to Gunther Piedmont and hunting down blue dragons for their claws, but no, we're not going to do that. We're, we'll just wrap things up here. Yeah, wow. 
So ghosts are too tricky. We cannot kill ghosts because we don't do the damage we need to do to them in one round. We just, we're not fighting dragons. So the good news about dragons, by the way, is that I think the dragons here are probably close to like level eight. I don't think they're level nine dragons. I should find out, shouldn't I? I'll look it up online between between this part and the next part of this video to determine what level they are. But if they're level 8, we don't want them. We'll be glad not to have them in our army. Uh, and we can get these same dragons, uh, like blue dragons and thunder dragons. They will show up in other areas of the world and they'll be higher level as well. So we don't really want them at level 8, not at this point in the game. We'll skip them. Man, almost 10 days and we didn't kill anything out here. That's a shame. All right, well, that ends the area investigation. All right, so I'll be back everyone and we'll do some training next. And then it's time to head over to Alba. So give me a few seconds. All right, guys, let's get some training done now here at Dardunnels. We'll get a chance to see what type of uh, enemy formations we have waiting here. There's actually not going to be too much training that I feel like we need to do either. Most of our teams are already level 8 or 9. So the only two people I'm thinking of training are going to be Ultra and Fordham. Both of their leaders are not yet level 9 and all of our other leaders are. And I think their armies could also benefit from the experience points gain here, too. So, let's do those two battles. Well, actually, we should end with our war funds above 2,500 goth, too, which would be nice for a change. Yep, should just be above it. Probably close to, like, 2,600-something. Good luck, Fordham. Let's see what this battle consists of. Look at all the zombies! I'm happy that you stopped by to train, but uh, do you believe that strength is everything? If so, then don't expect to progress any further. Thankfully, I don't think undead regenerate between combat rounds in training. If they do, we've lost. <laughs> or, yeah, we've lost. We don't have the we don't have the holy DPS to kill so many uh, zombies. We would need to do it uh, with AOEs for the most part too. Now, notice that there's a difference between the zombies, the ones with the hair slooped over to their left side, uh, those are girls, and the guys have the short hair. There is no difference, though, in what the zombies are capable of doing. There's just different graphics for them. Of course, if nothing else will kill that leader. If it looks like, if the zombies do get back up, we're not going to be able to train here. <laughs> this is, uh, too much. We have only a single Blessed Sword and a single Fairy. So, uh, we would have to, first off, hope the fairy is the one who, and the Blessed Sword Wielder are the ones who kill the zombies if they do get back up between combat rounds. I don't think they do, though. Actually, I really doubt they do. We also don't change their forms, because I think our fireballs will be making them into skeletons at this point. Good crits on our side. We are spreading the damage all over the place, which would be nice if we do indeed have to worry about them getting back up again. Guess we'll find out right here. 52 damage for them! That was a fantastic crit. This battle also has us killing five of them. Five enemies. That's a ton of experience points. So this might be a good location to go to. Remember that I... I don't think what you kill matters as much as the numbers of them that you kill and their levels. You get the same amount of experience points, I think, for killing a dragon as you do for killing an undead if their levels were the same. Okay, they do not regenerate between combat rounds. Which I'm very grateful for. It means that we can actually win this battle. Yeah, look at that. 85 experience on some of these people. Good job, Forb. You did not need that much, but I'll, I'm glad you got it anyway. Alright, and so let's do the last training. 
which is Ultra. Yeah, 2,600 something. This, we should win this battle too. Although, uh, there's only two units here. This must be the same guy. He came back, he's like, okay, well numbers didn't work. Let's try a single badly positioned dragon. <laughs> also not going to work for you, friend. I, once again, I feel like the dragons really do need a second attack in the back rank. It would make them very fearsome opponents then. Or at, at the very least, make them on par with like a sorceress, right? We just did 20 damage with her. And that guy does 27 damage. But you remember, he counts as two units as well. I just... I don't think the, they were balanced very well, unfortunately. Alright, time to... Time to kill it. I'm really liking the witch added to this group. That, she's been really useful. Don't have to worry about healing if the unit can't make any type of attacks. Ultra, you didn't level! You're kidding me! How close are you to leveling? Oh! Three of you could use a fight somewhere. Okay, I'm going to off-screen that then. Yeah, I'm going to off-screen that. Oh wait, Ultra, you were... You were level 9. My spreadsheet was wrong. You did not even... Never mind, you didn't need to do that battle. Did I... Did I have another unit that wasn't level 9? A unit leader. A unit leader. No! Oh, okay. Then I don't need you to do that. You can just... Alright, we're good. Alright. That was a waste of money, though. Arguably. You didn't need it to do that fight. Uh, it's too late now. I'm gonna keep it. Alright, everyone. That's all for training. So, let me put another break here. When we come back, it's time for Alba. Give me a few seconds. Alright, everyone. Before we go ahead and head over to do Alba, there's one more thing I want to do. And that's change this ninja to being a fencer. Now his alignment is such that we won't be able to make him a ninja again. So if we do this change, we can't undo it unless we drop his alignment somehow. But I'm okay with this. We picked up all that gear in the last area investigation that we just did. And the fencer, I think, has slightly better stack growth in one area when I went and checked. Dexterity. He improves between, I think it was uh, four and six points, but the ninja is, I think, two to four. So he's better for that purpose. Less mentality than the ninja by one point, but I'd rather him have the dex. All right, well, we're set. Let's head on over here to Alba and see how well the revolutionary army did. Judging from the fact it's still a target, I'm guessing they didn't succeed at this. Scene 9. Liberation of Alba. The Central Division has taken the slaughter of the reinforcements at Dardunnels as a mutiny by the Southern Division. Oh, interesting. I wonder why they thought that was the case. Did they not realize there were monsters in the group? Huh. Wasn't the Southern Division the general following the Central Division's orders? We have no idea why General Gonzalez decided to involve those monsters. But it's certain that the Central Region is worried about Lotus. If they learned that Palatinus was employing monsters, 
nothing can be said if they consider this kingdom as a land of pagans. The entire southern division was cut off to emphasize that the central region took no part in the incident. Okay, I'm a little confused here. So I guess they're telling the locals around here that it was a mutiny by the southern division. And that's why they're not helping. But they're telling Lotus that they knew about the demons? Or that, holy crap, there's demons? We're not involved in that at all? We're not sending any troops down here? At all. I don't know. This is a bit weird. But I'm, I'm glad it's working in our favor. Because it sounds like the central division hasn't sent any reinforcements here. Cut off, huh? Troops have been dispatched to control the chaos created by the monsters. Most of them, including Destin and his company, were sent to this region. We're on our own against this other division. Okay, so they were busy. So there were more monsters than what we fought. And Destin and them were busy handling those creatures by the time we moved our army over here. So we're clearing up what's left, I suppose. Let's get started. Alada in the south will be our embarkation point. At the castle, a half day's march north of Alada is our objective. We must take the castle. There is only one possible route directly north into Aki Castle, but there will be a sizable force waiting for our arrival. We will lose in a battle of numbers. I think it's best to wait for the enemy to come to us then defeat them one at a time. No neutral cities here, so that's great. We'll be able to take everything here. My memory of this mission is such that there are no more ogres or goblins to fight in this mission. In fact, I don't think we'll see them for some time again. If we see them again. Okay, standard, standard stuff. Oh, you'll note I did not create any new formations here. I'm thinking we can try to add more soldiers in the next scene instead of this one. I want to get the experience spread out a little more upon the troops I currently have. And I think when we're able to area investigate this location, we'll be given a special item that will double the amount of soldier points we earn. And we can swap that around to different units to help them uh, with the soldier growth for the few of them that still... We probably want like four more people. Uh grown from soldiers, and then I think we're done with soldiers. Maybe, maybe six. We'll see. <laughs> Even though it was abandoned by the Central Region, the Southern Division is a force to be reckoned with. I'm also concerned about General Gonzalez's intentions. We must stay alert. Regardless of why, this is a perfect opportunity for us. I want to meet the expectations of our sympathizers. And the Revolutionary Army who took us in. Inform everyone to prepare for battle. Absolutely. I can remind you, second charge there at the end. I guess this will be good proof that we're not secret spies for the Southern Division, also, if we help wipe them out here. Alright. Aka Castle needs to be defeated. We're taken. And of course, we can't lose Magnus, nor will a lot of fall. Alright, let's spin Magnus around. Okay, and what do we have here? A Dollmaster and three Witches. Well, that's not a lot of damage. That's just annoying to fight. Oh man, this would be a great, actually, army to use soldiers against. There's only one thing that does damage here. All we have to do is out-damage him. He gets, only gets one attack. Oh, I may do a little army organization right now. That's too delicious of an army to not deploy soldiers against it. Oh, their levels are a little bit lower than I expected them to be. So I... The way I remember leveling in this game is that the scene number tends to be... tends to hint as to the levels of the enemies that you'll fight in it. This is scene 9. So I'm expecting enemies to be around level 9 in this on average. This army, though, is mostly level 8s. We'll earn less experience points for, these, for fighting it. 
what is, she, what is her army? Oh! Two pumpkin heads in her army. That's... Oh, that is going to be tricky. All right, well... If I want... Oh, I, okay. Do I want soldiers? Because then I, I am going to have to create another army right now. And who's going to lead... Who wants the soldiers in his army? I remember Fordham had some some soldiers in his force. We could give him back two soldiers and remove Cassandra and Katreda. Or Cassandra and Deacon can come out. Can probably remove. I don't know. I wasn't expecting to want soldiers. But we could try making another neutral army. Everyone, this is it's just too good not to not to try to get not to to sneak some soldiers in. Okay. I think we're going to do it. So Let's deploy Fordham first. And Fordham. Oh, uh, okay, hold on. Uh, okay, if I'm gonna do this, this I'm gonna cut this really quick because this is gonna take a little bit of time for me to do properly. Give me, give me a few seconds. All right, everyone. I had to uh, restart this particular part. <laughs> so. The names of these people might be different now, but their armies should be the same. Okay, good. And over here as well. Yep, Elton's here now, not whoever this was originally. Everyone else should be the same levels? Yep, okay. So, uh, the only thing that's randomized, besides, of course, who enemies attack and how much damage you do and stuff of that sort, when it comes to the enemy formations you fight when you go to a scene, is their names. Uh, I don't think anything else is different about them. I think the affinities they have might also be the same, but I don't remember. But in any case, it was far faster for me to just restart <laughs> this particular part in order to get my armies assembled. So, let's show what I did really quick. Magnus is now using one soldier again in his army, and his army itself has an Asante cross again. Fordham has two soldiers in his force again, and he's mostly defensive. We're probably going to use him against that enemy army that we see walking down here with those three witches to try to earn some soldier points on his force. We added a single soldier to Belduke's army. And we created a new army, led by Clifford Lee. We've got Roland in here, Cassandra and Deacon, as well as one soldier. The plan in the future will be to drop this soldier, drop one of these other units, and give him a golem. But we won't have a golem, I think, for some time. Oh, and I... Did I remember to give an Asante cross to Fordham? I did, okay. Fordham probably could use a little more damage, but we'll, we'll go with it, what he's got. Okay, so, everyone gets deployed. And how are we dealing with the Pumpkinhead group? I think... I think it would be best if we send... Bruno at it to start in the hopes that Gina can kill one of those pumpkin heads since that's a nasty group to fight. Ooh, Bowen has a morale of 15 as well, so that would be useful if he's able to conquer that stronghold. So if you're going there, Bruno, we, we want to send Clifford Lee 
in that direction as well, but we don't want him to lead the charge. So we'll put him here. And Geohell. Geohell? We'll, we'll go with Geohell. Uh, is a good aligned place. We're going to want to send someone good aligned in that direction. So Bumba, you'll head out uh, that way. I guess we'll send you south. Just in case we have neutral and or uh, neutral. Just we have, if we're fighting lawful or chaotic armies on both sides, we'll send uh, not Penelope. We'll send Bell Duke in that direction as well. And let's start. Another army approaches. What is this, Nathan? Oh. That's a bit nasty. Two gremlins in the back, a hawkman, and a phalanx in front. Um, that's probably Penelope. Or Magnus could also potentially do that battle. We'll send him out as well. And in the meantime, Dio, I'll send you up here. Definitely you stay there. We should probably rotate someone around. Have another Phalanx, Victor. Oh, okay, another good soldier battle. One Phalanx and three soldiers. Well, it's gonna be someone else who does that fight. Okay, let's try kick the witch out of that city with Bruno. We'll use the Alempedra here, too. Oh! Gina is still in the opposite uh, formation, as it were. Uh, he He's not in the position I wanted him to be in, so we're not killing... We're not killing that uh, soldier. Oh my god! I think we just lost our leader. Because that Pokemon gets another attack, and that kills him. Wow! Wow! Oh, that's awful. What an awful start for that fight. For this entire map. Holy crap. Yeah, damn it indeed. Bruno won, but he fell. So, we're lucky that we have a, someone else we can field promote. I think. Yeah, we can field promote. So we can do change leader to Tracy. And the... Okay. Uh, the witch place is here. So we can get him resurrected as well if Tracy takes it. Clifford, we need you to run up here now. Magnus as well. Everyone else needs to come up here quickly to hold the city. After we, because after we resurrect Bruno, we need to run away with him. Uh, Fordham. Oh crap! You've got. You're the one who's supposed to be doing, doing most of the soldier battles. Let's move you up. Uh, dismiss. Sure, we'll move you up here, and that will leave. Actually, I think that's just ultra guarding. A liberated bone end. Tracy? Let's head into the witch's den. Do you need my skills? Yes. Who needs to be revived? Bruno. So, you want Bruno back... Bru Bruno... To be brought back to life, huh? That'll cost you 290 goth. Alright, then let's begin. Hope, the god of wisdom, grant me the secret of returning the deceased back to life. There, I'm done. 
Looks like everyone is alive and well. Take care of yourself. Okay, I need to quit and pause the game. Okay, so Tracy, we can now re-promote Bruno. I'm going to change their formation up as well, because I don't, I did not want that to happen. Although, to be fair, we would have lost Gina, I think. Is that right? Yeah, we would have lost Gina. So, I guess I'm kind of glad for what just uh, occurred there. Actually, no, 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 no. We wouldn't have lost Gina. The pumpkin head... One of the pumpkin heads would attack Gina. I think the front line would attack Gina. The back one would attack Tracy. But she would have lived with a few hit points left. And we would have killed the pumpkin head. Okay. Wow, that was really embarrassing. <laughs> First battle. Lost Bruno. But... He did what I needed him to do, which is scare the witch away. Unfortunately, we're... Unfortunately, Bruno's the one now who's going to be fighting a bunch of these other enemy units. And I don't think... We could get him away with a quit gate. We could get him away with a quit gate. Maybe we can move him away fast enough. Let's try. Of course, that witch, is, that witch is coming right back again. And I don't think we kill this leader. I think we're close, but I don't think it happens because of all the witches. Oh! If they just... If the only person they target... Okay. Is indeed our healer, though. We'll, we will kill him. Oh, or maybe not. Oh, definitely not. But that's good, because we still won that engagement. Which gives Magnus soldier points. I think I'm fine with this mess at the moment that's that's moving around. I'm um, now at the target location. All right, Penelope, uh, we need you here too. Everyone needs to be... Actually, you were marching up here just in case I needed a good aligned unit. We'll march you this way now. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, who's taking on the witches? I guess we'll start with you, Magnus. So you'll take on Cindy. Might lose... I, we won't lose anyone here because we have a healer. But Pumpkin Shower is going to be rough. That witch is annoying. I hate that she already dodged uh, three of our attacks. Oh, wow. So much damage taken. We've lost this engagement. I'm going to use the Elempendra here to just uh, kill one of these Pumpkin Heads. This is just awful. Oh, or not. Or we won't kill anything. Like, there we go. Good. A leader down. Pumpkin Shower. God, what an awful, awful ability to have to worry about. At least with the leader dead, we don't have to worry about that fighting us any longer. Magnus can now head home. Although this means I'm going to need... If I want my to get back to soldiers, I'm going to need to do some finandling... Fidangle... Fiddling? <laughs> with our units. Oh! Oh, no! Clifford Lee, I did not want you to fight this group. And it's still in... The, oh, we're going to take so much damage here. Unless we can kill these pumpkins quickly. Okay. Good. Not really what I wanted. Oh, but you guys gained the levels, so that's also acceptable. That's acceptable. Okay. Penelope finds a spell book. 
Fordham, I need you stepping outside. You need to be the one charging these enemies. That's good. You're now in the lead, and you're still in the city. Wait, wasn't one of these a tough group? <laughs> oh, no, one of them was a tough group! <laughs> oh, man, I'm making all sorts of mistakes in this game. Uh, I don't think we're winning this fight, because those two gremlins will do a lot of damage to Katretta and knock her, and knock her uh, on her butt. Yeah, I think we lose this fight with this group. This was poorly... You're making all sorts of mistakes, Tim, and now they get to go again. Yeah, that Troy's attacking the enemy leader is not good. Yeah, we lost. That also is awkward, because that forces now Fordham away, and I wanted him up front to fight the other Phalanx group. Oh, this sucks. Okay, but we didn't lose a soldier, so we can still move you into the stronghold. This means that we need Dio to fight that group in front of him instead. Got a heal seat. We see a cleric over there. It doesn't matter. We can't go look at it at the moment. We have another battle to do. All sorts of mistakes. My goodness. This is awful. We might kill that Hawkman, though. Oh, darn it, Shannon. What level are these things? They're going to hit the same two people. They're going to get to go again next round. Oh, the same one person. They're going to double attack Shannon. Good, good. Kill one of those stupid gremlins. Good. That forces them away. And then Dio. I'm gonna move you away. Gotta actually keep moving away. Dismiss. I'll move you up through the woods. Bruno. So that was super awkward, Bruno. I am so sorry I got you killed like that. We're going to go ahead and dismiss you. And then go and give you back a heal leaf. Now, once again, everyone, uh, we could have fled. Uh, nothing stopped us from fleeing. Uh, we could have fled to save Bruno. But again, that's not what I want to do. The game is far too easy if I go ahead and just retreat whenever anything looks bad. And I don't want to do that, so... Thus, we lost Bruno. Oh well, so be it. Quick gate, let's give you back an Altar of Resurrection. Or a Altar of Resurrection. The sad part is we killed a unit and Bruno didn't get that experience points. <laughs> As well, is that, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, it'll be okay. I mean, it's gonna have to be. Oh! Uh, there is something else I wanted to do, though. Oh, this is super awkward. Oh, the, oh, I hate... I hate that I can't dismiss Magnus' group. Because I want to give him back more soldiers. And I, the only way I can do that now is to do something that's so annoying to do. So, let me show you. We add the group of soldiers here, which means the group loses all, all its unity is now gone. It has to start over from scratch the moment we go ahead and add a new unit to it, or we move a unit. We deploy Bruno. We get to do a battle against these guys. Assuming they don't focus on my soldiers, this is a good matchup for them. Oh, 
Oh, right, you're set to autonomous at the moment as well, Clifford Lee. Okay, not bad. So, okay, damage. If they don't retreat back to a stronghold. Let's see if they do. They do not. Okay, Fordham will take them on next, then. Okay, let's pause Bumba. We can rest you. We can also rest Bell Duke. What does this army consist of? A cleric and two golems. I think you can handle that, Bell Duke, so we'll send you after them. A Dio. We can now move you back here. We do want Fordham to do the battle against the group that's marching up, but I don't want him to lose some of his soldiers, so I'm going to do a swap. And now, Magnus... ...exchanges with Bruno... ...those soldiers. Then... We have we dismiss Bruno again. We go back into his army. And we add back soldiers. It's very annoying. I wish there was an option to just replenish soldiers from the battle map. Instead of doing what you see here. It's so frustrating. I understand why you can't do it. Like, but maybe make it an option here at this particular city, because we have the retreat option only here. It would be so nice to do oh. To do that, actually, we're not even done. Right, because we don't want to replant soldiers. We want to get our sorceress in here. Hold on. Tracy, right? Yeah. Then I need to make sure that the Arby's items are still acceptable. Let's see. That's fine. Dispatch Bruno. And Bruno rotates around here. And... I... I don't know who I want heading out. Ultra or Bruno? Uh, we'll send Bruno out to start. Wake up! We're going! Good, good, <laughs> good job, Bell Duke. Holy crap. Crack that whip. All right, let's head after that cleric. Bumba. Oh, what's the ci what's the city over here? It's a good aligned city? It is. Okay, so you got to be the one to take the city, Bumba. What's that mage group doing, I wonder? All right, Penelope, let's have you rest. Good. Fordham is the one who needs this... This experience points. These experience points. Unfortunately, it's a physical damage group, and we're fighting a phalanx on the first rank. And I don't think we kill him, which means he's running away. But I think that's fine. We only care about the soldier points here. And now he'll go back and heal. Okay. So we're going to be here a while, repulsing the enemy groups as they try to take us out. And that group of wizards is heading down here. Okay, so Magnus... Let's send you here. And Penelope actually... Oh, okay, hold on. I want Penelope back over there again now to fight those wizards off. Uh, we'll win the fight, but we may lose our skeleton. That's the only heal she'll get.
Good job, Belton. You do quite a bit of damage with that. Okay, won't lose a skeleton this time. Penelope, I don't think you can reach us in time. Unfortunately, I moved you too far away. Let's see if we can get you over the, over the mountain. Okay, that's not going to happen. So let's just try charging the stronghold. I don't think we're we making it there in time, though. What's this group consist of? This is Belger. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a bit of a shame to do a battle with, like, any of us. But I guess we're, we're going to do it. How's your army? You can probably handle that battle, Magnus, without too much worry. Oh, Dismiss would have been another good person to do that fight with, but it's too late. He's out of position. I always, or almost will always, field pause, even if I don't need to, because I want to make sure I can handle whatever awful things happen uh, between battles, if some things don't go as I planned. I don't think we kill any of them this round. Oh, no, we killed the cleric. She is dying. Assuming Gion can do it. Yes! Unfortunately, though... Oh! Holy crap! Not unfortunately. Our skeleton remained alive. Now, to heal him or not, because he automatically regenerates at the end of combat if we decide not to heal him, and he dies. I think we do heal him, because I want the experience on him. And yes, I don't understand how it works, but you can rub heal leaves apparently on skeletons and heal them completely. Let's get over here. I guess they smoke it. And... Okay, we're just gonna leave you there, Dismiss, to see what the enemy decides to do. They might come after you instead of charging south to a stronghold. Oh, crap! Right, this group's running, so their formation's different. We may lose soldiers here. No, we won't. Good. At least not in that engagement. Nice! Hey! Our so oh, you know what? We didn't even need to heal the skeleton, now that I think about it, because the group rotated, didn't it? We're not in any danger of losing him. Uh, it's too late now. He leaves only 10 goth, so it's not the most uh, expensive mistake like losing Bruno was. But that would have been Gino we lost otherwise. I don't I don't know. I think we still... I, in the end, I think that was the better of the two outcomes there. Holy crap, and everyone else leveled. Great. I think you're our first level 10s, Belduke. Took care of those losers. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she a lot of sass on her. A lot of sass on her. She's pretty fantastic. Magnus, let's scare away this mage. You're set to attack leader also, so you should annihilate him. Oh, or not. It is called Nightmare that the Ghosts use. Ooh, good crit little soldiers. That may do it. Because nothing else gets another attack. Oh, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. The wizard has to get two attacks. Nice! Holy crap! Taking the enemies apart piecemeal was working out for us. Once again, you always prefer to do it that way. Alright, Magnus, we can now move you back here. Dismiss. I'm gonna move you up a bit. The tricky part about this 
is if we fight the enemies here at this stronghold, they will f uh, end up being pushed beyond the stronghold. Um, hold on. Let me, let me explain this a bit better. If When we defeat these guys, if we, if, we, if we defeat them here at this stronghold, or rather, I'm sorry, we don't defeat them. If we, if we win a battle but don't wipe out the squadron, they get pushed across this bridge here. And that's super awkward if we want to wipe out the entire squadron. Because they're not, they're going to rest there, and I have to wipe out the whole squadron at once. Because killing the leader throws them over here, and then they just run on this side of the bridge, and we don't want that. So I agree with Hugo here. We absolutely want to engage the enemy as they come towards us, if possible. Okay, so I saw an archer up there, Bumba. Let's have you head up there. And in the meantime, we can have Dio see what's happening in the city. I envy young people. You guys are full of hope. The world is full of opportunities for young people. So change it as you wish. Don't forget, people will be watching and judging. You subscribed everyone's first, like, experience with the internet. <laughs> Everyone watches what you say. So full of hope. And all that is dashed to pieces. Alright, here comes the enemies. Are they... And they're charging our city. Okay. That's good to see. Bell Duke, what's happening in Giel? There's a mystical fruit that'll make you powerful. But I've also heard that it makes you crazy. It's not power fruit. We got plenty of that. Fruit of the underworld, I think, is what she's talking about. What we saw. What we call it? Possess. There's a shop here. What's for sale? Pointy hats and bandanas, because we want more witches. Oh no, we don't have a witch's dress here, though. Marionette, strip bow. Okay, some okay stuff. We don't need any of this, though. Oh, but there are. There are elemental books here. Elemental books have more power than a normal book does and change what the user casts to be of that element. We're going to want those, but I'm not going to be able to get them, I think, on any of my units. Oh, we can! We can give one to Charlotte. So, Bell Duke, we want to buy a spell book for every single spellcaster we possess. We absolutely want that. So, let's let's do this. So, we want the Book of Water. And then, we can dismiss Ultra. And we can go ahead and equip... Book of Water. Now, I noticed that her intelligence increases by three, because the normal spell book was this new. I can't tell. But I'm pretty sure it's plus one int, int only. Int, int. Only one int. This is plus three int, and she'll, she'll do more damage. Um, she also, if she... If this was a Book of Lightning, for example, then her spell cast would change to Lightning instead of Water. So if you're a spellcaster, and you want yourself casting a different type of spell than what you normally do, Tell me, and I will change you up to use a different type of spell book. We could buy another spell book for our witch as well, but I'll hold off on that at the moment. I think we have just about 10 total casters, and it, we have just enough goth to buy a book for everyone, but we might not be able to afford that. Bumbo, let's rest. So, Bell Duke, I guess we'll move you. Uh, I don't think I'll need you. Let's leave you there. Actually, if I'm not if I'm not gonna worry about this any longer, the guarding a location, let's move you home. Bumba, what is in this group? Another shop. Uh, it's, it's a decent one for you to fight. Let's have you do it. 
Oh, what's the stronghold uh, alignment? Hold on. Good. I right, perfect. You're good enough to do that. But I am going to change your battle formation to be autonomous. What is this? The gremlin battle. So Penelope can do that fight. We want to kill one of these gremlins to make this army significantly weaker. If possible. It's a good start, guys. Ah, uh, that's a shame, though. Our archers decide not to attack that weakened gremlin. That means I think they're both being knocked to sleep. Oh, come on! That's it! You don't get any more attacks! That sucks! That really sucks. We didn't kill it. We lost the fight, in fact! Oh my god! Archers! What the heck is happening there? And that enemy army isn't going to march toward us, it's wounded, so that army enemy army is moving away. Yep, it's gonna heal. I can't chase it, because I do, I want Fordham to do this fight. Oh, this is... That's too good not to make the attempt to take that. Ah! That out. Nope, not gonna happen now. That other phalanx is mo marching out. They're just undead, though. We didn't hurt the undead either. I don't think so. It's not gonna matter. And we've already won this battle. You may be wondering, what's the difference between fire and air for witches? Because they both paralyze. Uh, there is none, as far as I'm aware. Um, I prefer we have paralysis for how quick it is. I just like the idea of someone's like snapping their fingers and the person not being unable to move as well, as opposed to the weird triangle effect that occurs. Fordham. And we now move back home. And what's happening here? He's heading after you, I'm pretty sure. Dismiss. So let's move you away. Bumba attacks from the side, which I think makes this battle a bit awkward. Yeah, they actually do more, get more attacks now than they used to. I think we still win this fight, though. Ooh! 20 damage on the fairy, holy crap! It just occurred to me. Our Valkyrie, I think, has the Earth Spear. But she is... shooting lightning. And we need to heal the fairy or she's dying. Yeah, she won't survive. Oh, actually, maybe she will, because we'll, we'll conquer that city and then rest in it. I really don't want to kill this group with you, Dismiss. Oh, we captured Verts! Oh, we're not good enough to... ...apparently liberate it. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, what's available for sale here? Miscellaneous gear for all sorts of different classes. Book of Wind and the Book of Flame. Once again, these are like the Book of Earth and Book of... Uh, ...Water. Only Fire and Earth and uh, Lightning instead. And you guys can see the extraordinarily expensive Annihilation book here, too, I'm pretty sure. This is a Dragonite book, if I recall correctly. Rare tome written by the ancient Dragonites. It casts a shower of flame up on the Earth. So, Dragonite spells affect every single unit in the enemy army, no matter where they're located, and do incredible amounts of damage. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm going to use them, 
because they've unbalanced the game in my favor pretty dramatically. We'll see. We may use them once or twice to show what they look like. But I'm not intending to make these a part of the army uh, as something we carry normally. I'm gonna buy, I think, some more fruits over here. So the leaves, we're gonna need more, more of them. We're using a ton. And I don't think we're gonna be able to heal our little fairy up before this battle starts. So let's do that with the heal leaf. Then I guess we'll buy another one. Dismiss, it would seem as if you, you're going to have to do a battle here. I don't really want you fighting them, but um, I want a group who has soldiers to do that fight. We could sucker him away, actually, with what we're doing, and send a unit over there to do that battle. Now that I think about it, maybe we should do that. God, good crits. If they all attack the knight, we won't defeat. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know if I get with all of you attacking uh, the knight. For that particular reason as well, that we really did want to spread the experience out. I thought we had people close to leveling in, in that group too. And now, Bumba, let's see what's inside this place. Have a drink or two. Just pay me when you liberate Platinus, okay? Oh, it's free. Just, uh... Free for morale? Come back when, uh, when all's settled. Let's chase her down. And dismiss, we're going to have you lead this group on a merry goose chase. So Fordham can ambush it. Ultra, we'll have you join the rest of the army. Wait, there's something here. Bumble well, finds another rosary. People are living rosaries all over the place. I guess they're mass-produced. <laughs> Just get way too many of them. All right, let's see. Let's do this with you. Dismiss. I do want Dismiss to do battles, but uh, not this one. I want soldier points. This is a good army to earn them on. Bumble will wipe her out, I'm pretty sure. There's only one knight left. Yeah, only one knight left. Sorry, sir, but now you're dead. Nice. And we, we needed a little bit more experience to level up another person. Well done, guys. We defeated them now, what? Now you go back here and sit here to the end of the this level, probably. Let's get a little closer. Alright, do it! Do it, Fordham! Although I just realized, if we don't defeat the enemy group, they're gonna run and take over that city. Which is not really what I wanted them to do. As opposed to running back. And I don't, I don't think we're killing the leader. He's fully healed, as is most of his soldier units. The things we do for, for fighters and Amazons. I 
keep expecting to get a fighter after every engagement there. <laughs> yeah, I think we lose this city. I think you're going to recapture it. Fordham, unless... I don't think we're able to get you across the mountain fast enough. To stop that. We'll see. If you can intercept them, that would be amazing. We have the, those enemies approaching us again because you guys refused to kill that one gremlin. It means that one group is still just as strong as it had been. Yeah, we're not we're not catching them. We, actually, we might make them panic. If we can get close enough to them. As for over here... I guess... Who's going to fight that particular enemy? I guess... I guess it can be you, Ultra. Let's have you... Try f killing Elton. Not the best for you because of their alignment. Yeah, this is all a chaotic group. Well, except the leader. Actually, are witches chaotic? I think they are. And you've won? Yeah, so you like it! <laughs> Poison the Witch means that her chance to affect the enemy with negative status effects decreases. You guys won, that's for sure. That will just throw them back, though. They'll be, be they'll return. And I guess Ultra, you'll fight the other group too, then. I for oh right, I forgot all about that group. That would be a good one for actually dismiss to fight. But we're out of position. All right, this is the Gremlin group. Come on, guys. We gotta kill one of these. Or, or, or not. I guess we don't have to kill them. That's really annoying, though. Good. If it's sleeping, we'll hit it automatically. But we still don't kill one of them. We still don't kill one of them. <laughs> oh, they're so dodgy. It's it's so frustrating. And that's going to throw them backwards, and they're going to go back to that city and heal again. So let's whirl you around, Ultra, and send you back home. I thought for sure we'd kill something in the other enemy squad that we didn't do so as embarrassing. Oh, that sucks. Okay, they recaptured that city. So this means that we need Bumba to come down here and reliberate it. But I'm going to wait to do that. Because I think we have to worry about the alignment of this place again. We will absolutely win this engagement. The enemy Phalanx is on the back rank, which means he gets only one attack now instead of two. I guess he's tired? The soldiers are? You can see why I really wanted to do these battles having soldiers in my armies, because this is a lot of... There's a lot of victories here without a lot of... And it takes a while to chew through these enemy formations. Fordham, you're getting tired. Let's have you use a power fruit. Yep, good. You'll wipe that enemy group out. What do we have still left here, by the way? A knight. Two knights and a cleric. That would be a good group for Ultra or Bruno to kill. 
Uh, Ultra, we'll have you make the attempt. Actually, yeah, we'll have to make the attempt. Let's send you over the mountain to get there. And dismiss. We're gonna start moving you towards the enemy wizard. Like this, I think. can't envision us losing any units with this group. This is a great group to get soldier points on. I get, well, both them and us. Our army is great because it doesn't do that much damage, but it's enough to beat this army. Yes! I think that's the third soldier promotion for Fordham. That's super interesting because it means that Fordham is likely to be able to become a Centurion Centurions, I think a unit uh, qualifies to become a Centurion if it has promoted three units. Three soldiers. Now, Centurions themselves are pretty useless. <laughs> they, the special effect they grant is uh, formations. Like, a, a s groups of squadrons can be set into a formation and then move around the map in that formation. There are some advantages to them, but not very many, if I'm being honest. And it's mostly a waste. The unit that's leading that, uh, the Centurion's group, can only have as many other units in uh, squadrons in its formation as it has soldier units attached to it. So in other words, our Centurion has to have two soldiers in its battalion in order to lead two other squadrons in the entire formation. You'll see later. Just know that it's not worth it in the end. Uh, you, you'd much rather have individual squads and a massive enemy, a, a massive formation of squadrons for the vast majority of the game. The only thing I could think of why you would want it is mostly for uh, farming creatures in random encounters. I can't think of it. I can't think of it any time it would be more useful, and I never use them. When I was playing, in all the years I played this game, which isn't very many, but when I was playing this game more regularly back, way back when, way, way back when, uh, I found them pointless. I didn't understand why I would want to use one. All right, Fordham, not bad. Now, actually, now we rest you. Oh, sure, Ultra. Walk up walk up the mountain and then walk down it again. No, walk up the mountain and then come down on this side, please. Can't do that. Okay. Fordham, let's break camp with you and move you over here. Bumba, we're going to move you back down here. Good. This was, if he's lucky, we'll be able to force that mage. Okay, I want him forcing the mage to the side. Oh, stop! The gremlin group is coming back again. Wait, is that the gremlin group? Yeah, I think it's the Scrimmon group. Oh, I think I gotta be careful when I when I hit that enemy tent because I want Fordham in that city. Or we or we bounce that army into the other into the other city. Okay, who's doing this battle? What does this consist of? This is the Gremlin group. Okay, so we need to kill something here, guys. We need to kill something here. Who can kill one of these things? I don't think Clifford does it. I think we only weaken something. Dio's got the best chance to kill one of these gremlins. We just need the archers to both hit. I think that's your group, right, Dio? You have two archers in your group now. No, you do not. Okay. I think we still try with you. 
Oh, crap! The enemy... Well, mage is coming out. What does her army even consist of? We can handle that. Maybe. It just occurs to me they're all going to attack, I think, my griffin. I don't think I can... Oh, we can do this. Everyone still gets all their attacks and the griffin's set to one side. So let's do this instead. Alright, Theo, come on. Let's see you do it. Can you kill a gremlin? No! Don't attack the phalanx! Attack the gremlin! We need a gremlin to die! Oh, that's a shame. Shannon, you're gonna take so much damage here again. All because my group didn't do... Come on, kill it! Hit it! Yes! All right. That group is now significantly weaker and able to be handled by just about anything else. Oh, thank God. Grumble, you were obsessed with that phalanx. I can't blame him, though, to be quite honest. Phalanxes are easy to strike, and we do elemental damage. So it's a good target for us to, to kill. He's coming back for more. Okay. Clifford, let's have you fight him then. Actually, maybe not. Maybe we have Dio finish him off. Win this... Uh-oh. Okay, yeah, no, I, I think we're okay. We win this engagement without too much trouble. Yeah, I had to do this, or our Griffin would take a little too much damage to my liking and potentially could have been killed. job that throws them away and now dismiss we have you attack this group we really liberated that place again <laughs> let's rotate you around now bumpa we'll keep you there uh you know what dio i will have you fight him and Clifford, let's have you move back to the stronghold. The only damage this group does is from the front line. So I'm not too worried about it. We oh, right, we have a Blessed Sword here. If we can do good damage to the skeleton, we might permanently kill it. Oh, this is also a good group to get soldier points on. Because if we don't kill both of these, they just resurrect again. I think you can farm the undead in this way, because we get experience points for downing it. Yeah! Yep, this will be a constant... Uh, we'll constantly be getting experience points killing that group over and over and over again. But, we have to deal with that first. Ah, uh, okay. Go ahead, rest you, Ultra. I see the other group leaving. We'll have Magnus fight it for some soldier points. Yeah! Great job, Grumbly. You're gonna be the one to help us take down that Phalanx this round. Ooh! I think Shannon survives this. Even a crit won't kill her. Ooh! But I don't think we... Do we kill him? We do. All thanks to that claw. Nice. And some more levels as well. 
Oh, that will ping pong that army someplace. Dio, you took a bunch of damage. Let's have you come back home. Uh, Clifford. We're gonna have you fight that enemy unit. And what is this city? 67. So Bumba or Dismiss can probably take that city. Oh, I didn't heal. I didn't heal. I think we lose our Beastmaster here. Because of my stupidity. Yeah, he's dead. We won't be able to take a second uh, Acid Vapor, and that's totally going to happen. Can't stop it. Yep. Rattled now. I'm stupid. <laughs> there was no reason for me to lose him. Now instead of 10 goth to heal him, it's 200 something goth to resurrect him. Oh my god, Tim. This is just awful. Quit gate time too. Because I don't want him engaging in any other battles. We, I need him up. And resurrected. That sucks, Tim. What an awful decision that was. Okay, Ultra, let's have you move up here. I can't believe that happened. I lost two freaking units here. And one of those was because of my absent-mindedness. What the heck, Tim? Heck, I don't even- I didn't even have to, uh... Oh, I should've done this battle with Magus with the soldier points. I forgot what group we were fighting. All I had to do was just shift the enemy- our army around to avoid that as well. You say what you like, a mannequin, your face! Stronghold we go. Oh, the enemy army is still charging, huh? Hmm. Dismiss. I can't believe I have to do this. Hold on. Okay. So, we need another resurrection. All this money I saved by not doing the training is going to getting people off of the ground. Unbelievable. Why on earth are you here again? We need your skills. <laughs> Who needs to be revived? Renal does. Another Beastmaster, huh? I sense a theme today. It'll be 290 goth for him as well. Let's begin. Hope, God of Wisdom, grant me the secret to returning the deceased back to life. There. I'm done. Looks like everyone is alive and well. Don't screw up again. <laughs> I'll try not to, Miss Rich. Ah, that sucks. Alright, something else, by the way, it just occurs to me that we haven't seen in the game yet. And that is the Elempedra from this option. Remember that we used the Elempedra very early on. It is not yet recharged. A certain number of days must elapse for you to use the Elempendra another time. Oh, a good aligned city. Well, this is going to be awkward because I want you defeating that unit. Ultra. Fordham. I'm going to move you... No, I can't. I can't move you. Uh, Bumba moves up here. Forda moves here. 
Clifford Lee, we can rotate you around. I really should play with also with the camera set to this. All right, so Magnus, you will fight this guy. Dismiss, you'll kill uh, the remainder of both of those enemy squadrons, I think, as well. Oh, that's interesting. This group didn't even attempt to move. If our witch paralyzes the back cleric, that would be the best. Good. Oh, that's a different type of weapon that guy possesses on the front line there. I don't recognize that sword. Ooh, good crit. Keep them from healing. And I think we continue to hammer them. Literally. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, it's, it's not a shame. Okay, good. He's he's running back to this to that stronghold to, to guard it as opposed to running away. Do we kill the leader? I think we might be able to do so. Yeah, Magnus struggled with this last time as well. Leia, we need one good hit from you. We need one good hit from you, Ansibel. Good. Okay. Finally. Another enemy leader falls. And what is that army's more uh, alignment for what's left? Neutral. Okay. That's good then. Uh, let's see here. Magnus, I'm gonna move you here. Dismiss, how are you holding up? He is hurt. We'll just keep you here for the time being. Uh, Clifford, though, could use some experience points. Clifford, let's have you... You know what? You'll take on... You'll kill that gremlin. Huh? What's this? It's an iron claw. We have plenty of them, Magnus. You should recognize that by now. Slightly different formation and an annoying change since we're not going to kill anything. And they're going to heal that healer up to full. Right, sorry, not to full, but they're going to heal her. So we're less lucky now to, de to destroy something in this group. Close. Very close. This also means we're likely wiping out this entire enemy squad next Ooh. next combat round. But we'll still do it with you. Uh, should we heal anybody in your group ultra? I was pretty good at doing that until this episode. No, we'll be fine. using witches very often, but in the right group, they're extremely strong. Do we kill him too? 
no. Which is good. Yes, good, because we didn't want to waste some of that experience points. Look at all that delicious alignment down. That is fantastic. And I think you can wipe them out. I forgot all about that group of undead. Holy crap. We need to have sense. We need to sense over there to do that fight. That should be Clifford Lee that does that. Uh, okay, hold on then. Bruno. Let's have you. Let's have you destroy. Judy's group. Magnus, I'm gonna move you away. Good work, team. Good work. If I don't make mistakes and screw up <laughs> watching what's happening on screen, I actually do rather well, I think. All right, Magnus. I don't know if you can take this stronghold. What's the 68? I think it's too good aligned. I don't think you can do it. I think we need someone else to do that. Uh, Penelope can, can do that. I want you to go on and do it. Fordham. I'm going to move you away so that we give some room for the leftovers here to run in that direction. Yeah. Yep. It's a single gremlin. Clifford, we can, you can do it. You can do it. It's, I think, a hurt gremlin. A single hurt gremlin. Nice. And a level up from that. Good good work. Good work. Another Iron Claw. All sorts of these are flying all over, all over the place. Let's have you fight that guy. And then Dismiss. How are you holding up? Still hurt. Just have you rest. Now, even though this is an evil-aligned group, Bruno does so much damage. I'm sorry, his alignment is so chaotic. I'm not imagining him failing this. Good God, Gina! That was amazing! Upset that your master died earlier, I see. Nice. Good. Good experience points, and a level up for our Sork. Another rosary. Hey, take a look at this! It's another one of these rosaries. We find these things all over the place. What is the alignment of this city? Also good aligned, so Penelope should liberate both of these. Clifford, oh, I don't want, stop, I don't want that one unit going across that bridge. Fordham, we'll take you around, pause. Clifford, we're going to move you up over the mountain after all, like this. Magnus can move into the stronghold. Can finally liberate these, please, these places and see what's... No! Okay, okay, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I forgot Bruno's not liberating that. He's moving to the crossroads. Norik has been liberated. Good job, Penelope. Let's see what's in here. You've achieved a lot more than I expected. Liberate Alba and all of Palatinus and surprise me again. <laughs> We'll do our best. It's quite an undertaking, though. 
to rise up against the Holy Lotus Empire? I don't know if... I don't know how... That's on our shoulders to do. Alright, Bruno. We can just rest you there. Looks like... Who is this, by the way? We haven't looked at his army. It's Gonzalez! A vanity. With a decent squad on his side, too. Ultra. I think I had you all moving into the stronghold. I'm just going to stop that from happening. Preferred. You also need the rest, unfortunately. Okay, and by now, Dismas is probably all healed up. Yep. Alright, let's get some more experience with your group. Elpar has been liberated. Good job, Penelope. Let's see what's in here, too. A church. I admire you. You're following what your heart tells you. That's so dangerous. <laughs> what if your heart tells you to kill the guy right in front of you, rip out his, uh, rip out his uh, lungs and eat them in front of his family? That's not a good, that's not good. That's not a good thing. I lie to myself to keep out of trouble. Fainting containment, when all I want to do is eat people's lungs. It's not, it's nothing important. I just try to be honest with, in, to myself and what I believe in. <laughs> it is important to be honest to yourself, but you shouldn't eat people's lungs. And following what your heart tells you to do, that's a very dangerous statement. That's a very dangerous statement. I do not agree with what with that at all. That sounds like uh, letting emotions control you. And you should be above that. Not everyone, I suppose. Penelope should be, because she's she's trying to be lawful. But it's it's okay if Bruno or Ultra are uh, follow their heart, because they're allowed to be evil and, and get away with it. All right, folks. Let's see. Now I remember Gonzalez being a bit tricky. And I'm gonna want my Ilem Pedra ready. I gotta chase him down. Let's do it. And I suppose Magnus could use soldier points. So we'll throw him against that other group in a few seconds once he's rested. Go get him, boys. Oh, no. Dismiss is the one who wants... I want to do this battle. Not Magnus, right? Be even though Magnus can use the soldier points, I want the experience on Dismiss more, I think. Yeah. 13 more and he levels. It's worth it. Even if there's two units left in here. There's three. We won't kill all three in a single round, so that's a good target to go after. Where's Dio, by the way? I think there might be something special if Dio also... Depending on who sees Gonzalez, he'll say different things. So we'll move Dio up here, too. I think there's something special if he meets Magnus, for example. Oh, good resistance. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Paralyzed in the end, though. I'm expecting this to take several rounds. Actually, this would have been a good one for Magnus. For all those, because they, do, they don't do any damage, and we will take a while to kill this group. Especially if we keep missing like that. Yeah, this was a mistake. Can we replay? If Do we push this army away at all? We did not. You'll, you'll just kill him, Dismas. We'll just, we'll just have you do it. Very slowly. <laughs> Which makes me realize we really didn't want Trivis's group doing this. Uh, sorry, not Trivis, Magnus's group doing this. You 
might be wondering why on earth we would want a witch who poisons enemies as opposed to one that just per like incapacitates. Poison is actually useful for training or battles where there's no break in the fight ever because it's a permanent debuff as opposed to the shocks that can be uh, which can fade on an enemy. It all depends upon what you're looking for. It's the equivalent of like the kiss from an imp permanently weaken your forces, and if, if there's too much of that, well, you're not getting up then. You're not going to be able to do anything for the rest of the battle, and that your unit just becomes something that never succeeds, rather than just occasionally missing around. Oh, that was the... Oh, no, okay. I am about to say, that was the best possible situation. We killed only one of them. No, we killed two. Okay. Good job, Dismiss. Alignment up is useful. We want your alignment going up. And now you wipe out the last of them. Man, this was a lot longer than I thought this battle was going to take. Holy crap! <laughs> so many mistakes also in this fight. Uh, this, this scene. All right. Dismiss. Now we move you here. And we can move Fordham, I suppose, to this stronghold. And Bumba can go that way as well. And we're just waiting on now the others to arrive here, and then we'll launch our assault on the enemy. The enemy being Gonzalez. We've been launching attacks on the enemy, so, enemy apparently. <laughs> the sea creatures? <laughs> oh my god. Come on, Clifford, you can catch them. Catch them! All right, time to get some soldier points. Oh, we may be here a while with this army. I don't think we're going to be able to kill both of these very quickly or easily. Because we have to kill both of them at the same time. Oh. But you're going to gain a lot of alignment up doing this. It'll be okay. We might actually kill them both next round. And as your levels go up, you should get less alignment up from killing them. Oh, that's awkward. Well, they're a little more hurt now, but the skeleton has more hit points than the ghost does. We're going to have to get kind of lucky. This may, this may have been an awful choice, though. Because of all the alignment up we are going to gain. It's fixable by adding a skeleton to this army, though. So we'll, we'll allow it to happen. We're gonna kill both of them. This is the round to do it. We don't have one of our units incapacitated. Yeah, I, th I think we do it this round. Okay, that worked out. ninja garb. At this point, we don't want any more ninjas in our armies. We're all done with ninjas. Okay. Let's wait for these troops to arrive. Let them rest up, and then we assault the capital. Man, it took as long to do this small area as it did doing all of Dardanelles in the end. Eight days or so. Holy crap. 
Although, to be fair, that's all because I wanted certain armies fighting certain other armies. And, Bumba, how does your, what's your force look like? I th think we can put you back to attack strongest. And I'm just curious. Okay, I don't see anyone's... No one's alignment has shifted to lawful yet. So that wasn't that painful. All right. Let's end this. So... Magnus... Yeah, we'll have Magnus lead the charge. Dio can be next, although I don't know if I want Dio in the middle. Uh, no, I don't think Dio can be next. Bruno can be next. Actually, stop. If I use Magnus, he's set to attack leader, and we may kill him first. And I want to kill a different unit first, if possible. So we'll let Bruno lead the charge, and Magnus will follow it up. Actually, Magnus will go, will go third. Let's have uh, maybe Penelope. Then we'll send... Yeah, then we'll send Magnus in to kill him. And just in case that's not successful, Dio will then follow that up. But I'm not imagining we'll need another after Magnus goes. Even I was branded as an insurgent. I guess this is the end of your career. You did quite well for yourself, don't you think? Sir Baldwin! What have you done? I don't think Baldwin was acting under the orders of Lotus when he gave that fruit to General Gonzalez. I think he was acting on his own. But it's hard to tell because of his dark armor. It hides his true intentions. Well, I guess we'll, we won't find out in this, this episode. No, you... You deceived me! He did. He did. Well, kind of. He kind of did. There were repercussions he w mentioned in giving him the fruit. We'll learn a little bit more about that right now as well. What did I do? You had your chance. You just didn't put your power to good use. For those vile abominations, I... My family was... Silence! It was you who made up your mind to sacrifice your family. You willingly sacrifice your own family to save yourself. And now you dare blame me for your misdeeds. Could have, yeah, could have given that fruit to slaves, peasants, paid people to, to eat it as, or forced fed people instead, I suppose. He used his family. That's awful. Or he used his family in addition to other people. We got the, right, we got the impression from, uh, oh, what's his name now? The knight, uh, Ariok, I think that uh, the undead creatures burst out of their bodies. So, oh god. Reminds me of um, Amnesia. Oh. What an awful way to go. It turned out that this was all you were capable of. I'm sure you're glad to know that you were of good use to us. This was a very, very valuable case to examine. We learned that someone with little desire, like yourself, can only gain so much from the fruit of the netherworld. I'm afraid I must be going now. 
Did you finally realize that you can't do anything without our consul? Are you angry at me? At yourself? Channel that rage. Strike back at the revolutionary army. Perhaps you can gain the power too. Sounds like he's a part of some organization. Maybe Lotus is behind all this. If only you, the final hope, hadn't betrayed me. What meaning did my life hold? You can't imagine what I endured for this. Do you understand my pain? You have nothing... Have you nothing that you'd protect at all costs, even at the cost of your family? I will No. I don't. <laughs> other than other family members, and that's a rough choice to put that in front of someone. No. Sorry, Gonzalez. I don't understand you at all. Ah! I think we might lose someone here. <laughs> this is also a tough battle that I remember. Good music for this, too. For some hearing this track. Oh, wow! We're gonna attack him with Bruno's group. Then we've won. Uh, is Oh! We still may lose our fencer, though. That crit might cost us him. Yeah, I think he, he, he drops. We kill him here. That's it. Good job, Bruno. Revenge for what happened earlier. I thought... Were you set to attack leader? Okay, I expected... I, I was hoping to chew through one of the Valkyries first, but that was actually really stupidly easy. I will reach the top. I think it's possible to sneak past Gonzalez's army. Skirt the edges of that little island, or little island, the little uh, peninsula he's on, and attack him from the back. Because I remember doing that before. I did not. I did not think we would kill him first go. That's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> All that delicious experience points. We didn't kill those people. It's. Uh, I'm challenging my my inner uh, Gina at the moment. Okay. Well, we did it. Congratulations. Well done, Magnus. Frederick, did we do the right thing? Many were hurt. The entire kingdom and the Lotus Empire are against us. Battles will intensify, and so will the number of casualties. And that's not all. We haven't got the slightest clue as to what those monsters are. All of this shrouded in mystery. Can we... Can the Revolutionary Army overcome these obstacles? Well, the fact of casualties shouldn't really... I mean, they're all always a concern. But the Revolutionary Army is mostly made of people who are volunteers, I would imagine. Not forced into it. And they want to overthrow uh, the current leadership and change the course of their lives for the better. Perhaps some are just motivated by revenge. But not everyone is. So hopefully it will end positively. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the people are aware of the fact that they will die fighting, and I think they're okay with that idea, as long as they can secure a better future for themselves and their families, or their future families. Honestly, we are in a very difficult situation. But Magnus, don't you think that the important thing now is to do our best? That's such a non-answer, Frederick. <laughs> The most important thing is to always do your best. Not only just, not only just like now. It's not only now the most important thing. It's always the most important thing. You refuse to respond when faced with a difficult problem. You only act when the solution is obvious. The future, our future, is yet to be told. Okay, that's good advice. Don't, don't just do something because it's easy and the obvious uh, answer to something. Do what you feel is the best thing to do. Okay, that makes that's a little bit better, Frederick. But don't give me any of that fall your heart garbage. <laughs> Listen, Magnus, to the people's cheers. What we do know is that the cheers you hear, the rejoicing, is a result of what we've done. <laughs>